because it's all become clear. It's all become clear that there is no puzzle about this universe. What makes you think there are puzzles about this universe? Very simple reason. You're trying to explain it. And when you explain things, what, you would, what do you mean by explanation? There are several meanings of explanation. There's really one basic meaning. But first of all, to be able to translate what is happening into terms of words or numbers. In other words, to describe. But a real explanation is not just the description. It's a description which enables us to control what we are describing. But didn't we see in the last session that to control the world is not really what we want to do? So that if all explanations have as their function enabling us to control things, then maybe an explanation isn't what we wanted. And furthermore, you can very simply see that what makes things complicated is explaining them. When somebody explains to you how a flower works, and he's a great botanist, and analyzes all the innards of a flower, and shows the channels, the fibers, the processes of reproduction, and uh, so on that go on in it, everybody stands fascinated. See, how complicated that is. How clever God must have been to create that flower. To have all that complexity going. It isn't complicated at all. It's only complicated when you start thinking about it. Because the vehicle of words is a very clumsy one. And when you try to talk about the processes of nature, what is complicated is not the processes of nature, but trying to put them into words. That's as complicated as trying to drink up the ocean with a fork. It takes forever. And so this intense complexity that we see in everything is created by our attempt to analyze it all. And so what we do is, you see, when we analyze, we use our eyes and ears as scalpels. And we dissect everything. And we have to put a label on every piece we chop off. And so we scalpelize and we get it right down to atoms getting finer and finer and we suddenly thought well we got to the end of it because the word atom means what is not cuttable atomos uh, but then we found we could cut the atom and lo and behold big fleas had little fleas upon their backs to bite them and it goes on forever there is no end to the minuteness which you can unveil through physical investigation for the simple reason that the investigation itself is what is chopping things into pieces. And the sharper you can sharpen your knife, the finer you can cut it. And the knife of the intellect is very sharp indeed. And the sophisticated instruments that we can now make, well, there's probably no limit to it. But in a way... All that is vain knowledge, in a way. Because, you see, it, it, what it does is, it gives you the illusion that you've solved your problems. When you have controlled certain things, and you have solved certain problems, practical problems, you say, fine, more of that, please. Let's go on solving problems. And then you do. And you create a world of people as we are today, far more comfortable than people who lived in the 19th century. Just remember the, the troubles of going to a dentist when you were children, or some of you when you were children, of um, medicine, of uh, badly heated homes, of uh, all sorts of things that we don't put up with anymore. But the problem is we keep running into this thing that all constant stimulations of consciousness become unconscious. And when we take it as a matter of course to have certain comforts, then we switch the level on which we worry. When you solve a whole set of problems, people find new ones to worry about. 
And after a while, you begin to get that haven't we been here before feeling. <laughs> Aren't we just going round on a cycle and doing the same old thing over and over and over again because we don't realize that we're ta chasing our own tails. By an eternally recurrent process of not knowing who you are. That is the hide and seek. That is the nature of what the Hindus call the Manvantara and the Pralaya, the period of the Manvantara in which the worlds are manifested and the period of the Pralaya in which the worlds are withdrawn from manifestation. In and out, in and out. Evermore came out by the same door as in I went. And the thing is, to get to the point where you can see that you are doing that in every moment of your existence, with every tiny little atom of your body, you now at this minute, you see, are the whole, the whole system of inning and outing. In other words, you often think perhaps, um, maybe a long, long time ahead, I shall reach the point where I wake up from manifestation and overcome the world illusion and discover that I am the supreme reality behind all this diversification. My friends, there is no diversification. In other words, what you call diversification is your game. In the same way as you chop the thing and then you say it is made of pieces. <laughs> well, you forget that you cut it. And so when you see the world is complicated and that there are life problems and that uh, you, you might one day succeed. See, hundreds and hundreds of people are running like mad after something that they call the, that is success and they have no idea what it is. Now then there's something else. When you understand that, and when you realize that um, there's nothing to realize, well, it's all here, then what are you going to do? <laughs> it's like when a child is pestering father or mother with all sorts of questions. They finally get down to the deepest metaphysical problems. They say, oh, shut up and eat your donut. <laughs> And um, I wouldn't say that, you see, at this point, because uh, life, as one looks at it, you see, is in fact a celebration of itself. When you look out at night at the stars and you really wonder, good God, what is all that about? Well, it's a firework display and it's celebrating High Holy Day. Uh, it's whoopee. And the whole world is whoopee. It's a kind of exuberance. And therefore, you realize what a great thing it is. And what a great thing it is not to dissect the world with your analytical intellect. To be able to look out at the water or the trees or at the floor and the light on it in front of you without calling it light or floor or trees or thinking that it has parts or thinking that uh, it's complicated. It isn't. 